Welcome to Now Hear This Can Be Podcast. Thanks for listening. I'm Tyler Clausen, and this is what's happening in your community this week. Two people were killed in what police determined to be a murder-suicide in southwest Canby Saturday night, which was not discovered until Sunday. Canby police and fire initially responded to the scene in the 300 block of southwest 6th Avenue on a reported medical call that an Amazon delivery driver phoned in at approximately 5.54 p.m. on Sunday. It was called in by an Amazon worker who was delivering a package to the residence, Canby Police Chief George Trost told The Current Monday. The garage door was open and they saw what appeared to be two people on the garage floor bleeding. They did a very good job in seeing something and calling 911. I feel sorry for them. I'm sure it was not a nice scene to see. First responders arrived and located two individuals, a man and a woman in their 50s, dead from an apparent gunshot wound. A firearm was recovered at the scene, Tro said. On Tuesday morning, Canby police identified the victims as Michelle Callinge, 54, and Shad Bruins, 49. The investigation by Canby police found that Bruins shot and killed Callinge, then himself, Tro said. Neighbors reported hearing the gunshots the previous evening around 7 p.m. Saturday. It was not immediately clear how the bodies were not discovered until almost 24 hours later. The home was secured by Canby police officers and detectives from the Clackamas County Major Crimes Team arrived to assist in the investigation. Chaplains from the Canby Fire District were also on the scene to help locate and notify family members. This is obviously a tragic situation, and our hearts go out to everyone affected by the incident, Tro said. Also left in the wake of the tragedy were three pets, a silver black lab and chocolate lab, along with a 15-year-old orange tabby cat. Abundance of Love Pet Services is working with the executor of the victim's estates to find a good home for the animals. If interested, call 503 805 Nine eight seven six. The killing is the first victim in Canby city limits in more than eight years. When 43-year-old Grant's past resident, Edward Kelly Spangler, was found dead beside his SUV at Locust Street Park in February 2014 in a drug-related shooting. The shooter in that case, Michael Arlen Oren, 27 at the time, pleaded guilty to aggravated murder and first-degree robbery the following February and was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 30 years. Two alleged compliances, Francis Paul Weaver and Shannon Buttoncourt, also ultimately pleaded guilty to their roles in the crime and were given lighter sentences. Three and a half years ago, the community was rocked by a shocking and tragic quadruple homicide committed by Mark Leo Gregory Gago, who killed four of his own family members, including his infant daughter. Gago was shot and killed by deputies who arrived on the scene and found him reportedly in the act of attempting to strangle a fifth victim, an eight-year-old girl. But that crime occurred about 10 minutes outside of town by South Barlow Road between Camby and Hubbard. The initial response and investigation were led by the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. A reported gas leak early Wednesday morning closed traffic on Highway 99E through the heart of Canby as crews worked to repair the damage. Canby Fire Chief Jim Davis said that the leak was reported at 12.48 a.m. and was finally stopped at about 7 a.m. as Northwest Natural Crews worked throughout the night to repair the damaged gas line. Long night, Davis remarked. Commuters in the area reported a strong odor of natural gas in the vicinity of 99E and North Grant Street Wednesday morning. Canby Fire and Utility crews closed all lanes of Highway 99E through Canby between Elm and Ivy Streets to repair the leak, with traffic being diverted to 13th via South Ivy and Southwest Berg Parkway. Mike's place on Northwest 1st was evacuated early Wednesday morning due to strong odor of gas and the fact that it was nearly closing time, 2.30 a.m., Davis told us. Firefighters took natural gas readings at Mike's and other locations on 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Avenues and found that they were not at unsafe or explosive levels. Several readings closer to the Union Pacific Railroad tracks, however, caused some concerns, and trains were stopped until after 2 a.m., 
There was some wind blowing north and toward the downtown area, Davis said, but fortunately, most of the gas was going straight up. The winds picked up after an hour after the incident and it dissipated further. Canby Fire and the construction company's flagging crews assisted with directing traffic. Even when Highway 99E reopened Wednesday morning, it remained down to two lanes due to the ongoing repair work. It was a good response from Northwest, David said. If they had just shut off the valves, a good portion of Canby would have been without natural gas. They chose to weld a new valve on either side. It was a fairly technical operation. An Oregon State Police DUI traffic stop in Clackamas earlier this month led to the recovery of thousands of grams of methamphetamines, guns, more than $14,000 in cash, and other drugs. The initial stop occurred at approximately 5 p.m. September 2nd when an OSP trooper pulled over 37-year-old Thomas James Freeman of Portland for a traffic violation. During the traffic stop, the driver displayed signs of impairment and after a subsequent investigation was taken into custody for DUI, OSP reported in a September 27th press release. A subsequent search of the vehicle revealed several signs of recent drug activities and a loaded pistol, OSP said. The vehicle was searched on probable cause, uncovering several locked boxes that were seized and held pending a search warrant application. The search warrants were served on September 14th and the locked boxes were found to contain 3,946.25 grams of methamphetamine, 42.9 grams of cybacillin, $14,131 in U.S. currency, 10 guns, including handguns and semi-automatic rifles, and six unknown pills. OSP troopers were assisted by detectives from the OSP Criminal Investigations Department, Highway Enforcement Initiative, and Major Crimes Section. The Oregon State Police Domestic Highway Enforcement Initiative is supported by the Oregon Idaho High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area, which is an Office of National Drug Control Policy sponsored counter drug grant program that coordinates with and provides funding resources to multi-agent drug enforcement initiatives. If you like staying up to date with all of the news that's going on in your community, then make sure you check out our podcast where we have more sports and can be conversations as well as out and abouts. And you can stay up to date on our website, canbefirst.com.